Thank you for praying, every one of you. And um, there are, scripturally, there are, <clears throat> biblically, there are several kinds of preaching. And um, this kind tonight, I think I'd put it in the class of exhortation. And um, thank you for being faithful. Good crowd on Wednesday night, y'all. God bless you. And uh, I know you, you're you faithful for the Lord, and I appreciate that. Pastor, you've done a great job here. We pray for y'all. Pray that God will build, just build that wall around you. And um, I, I have preached a message one time. I, I mentioned it to you. And uh, that message is, Whoso breaketh and hedge the serpent shall bite him. It's out of the book of Ecclesiastes. And um, one time I preached it, and it's, it's online. It's probably on YouTube or somewhere. Well, I know it's out there. And you might want to look at that. But it's to give you uh, the authorities in life that you cannot break without being bit by the serpent. Um, I, won't, I won't preach that tonight. But, um, and I, I am going somewhere else here. But, um, you know, Job had a hedge around him. And um, and it was and the Lord put it there, and um, and Satan had to get God's uh, approval. In fact, it was God that initiated that conversation about Job. It wasn't Job. I mean, it wasn't Satan. Satan would that be the last person he'd want because of what verse one says. And I'm not preaching there, but what I'm trying to do for this just a couple of minutes here is to uh, exhort you, encourage you. Don't take anything for granted. Do not take the blessing of God for granted. Um, <clears throat> don't take your pastor and his family for granted. Amen. He hasn't told me to say anything. He hasn't told me you do. I've told him, most likely, most likely, you don't know what you have in a church, in a pastor, in a pastor's family. And um, you have to sometimes be where we are to know those kind of things. But if you would, just trust that we know because we've been there. Um, I surrendered preaching in 77, been uh, preaching ever since, really. But um, got saved, of course, in 72. So I've been around the block a few times. And um, I just, uh, for this few seconds, moment, minute or so, never, ever, ever take for granted what you have. And um, what, what that will do for you is what I will be preaching here tonight. Um, from, start off at the book of Revelation chapter 3 and you might want to go ahead and turn there. If you don't mind, I don't want to get warmed up and I may do that. So I'll, one more time, I'll take this off. What I'm preaching, I'll pray in a minute. What I'm preaching is strengthening the things that remain. Most everybody here, you've heard that message from somebody somewhere, maybe even your pastor. And, um, but that is just my, my starting point. And then we'll go to a few scriptures. Um, and maybe I can say some things that will, will help you tonight. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you <clears throat> for one more opportunity to stand up in this place with this King James Bible in front of me and ask you, if you will, please, God, add your blessing to this service Thank you, Lord, for the, for the good music. Uh, Lord, thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, for every ministry of this church. Every person that's encouraged, my wife and I, those that have, Lord, that have gone that second mile uh, in our instance, Lord, over this, um, this sickness that I've had, I thank you for that. Those that have reached out and in some way have tried to be a help and a blessing, and I've, I believe it has. I thank you for that. Others, Lord, have encouraged us in so many other ways, and we're sure appreciative of that. Thank you, Lord, for the pastor, how they've taken care of us, made us feel right at home. All the other things, Lord, that have gone on. And I pray, God, for each individual one here, those, Lord, that have uh, burdens, Lord, they have issues, Lord, I don't know them, but you do, but they have burdens, issues, um, valleys, maybe, maybe, and um, trials, afflictions, those kind of things, God, you know about, and you're in charge of, and you can handle and I pray for them, Lord, that you'll bless them and help them. Maybe somebody came in tonight with a heavy burden. Now, I don't know that. Most likely they did. 
and I pray for them. If there be somebody here, Lord, tonight unsaved, I pray this will be their night. Lord, that they would yield their heart and in repentance and faith, understanding, Lord, this matter of sin and, Lord, this um, great, great, great sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ on that cross, taking our place and taking our sin upon him, he who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I pray for them that they will see there was a transaction made and um, I pray that they will uh, receive Christ and start this new life. Well, thank you for that. For those that might be confused, might even be doubting and don't know why, I pray for them. Whatever the need is, I pray will be met. Lord, if there are those that have not taken those next steps uh, in their Christian life, I pray for them. Uh, Lord, whether it be baptism, um, uh, being faithful to church now, whatever. You deal, you work, you move, have your way, and I will praise you and thank you for everything you're going to do in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. In the book of Revelation, right there in chapter 3, uh, verse uh, 1, and we'll read 1 and 2, and that's enough right there just to get the, the thought. But unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Okay? Verse 2, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Now watch these words that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Now, what I'm looking at, of course, is the few words there, strengthen the things which remain. <clears throat> so there were some things that remained. Now, would you take your Bible, if you will, and turn over to 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. And in 2 Peter chapter 1, I want you to look at this. These are all familiar verses with you. But maybe, uh, you know, as I, I kind of build on this, you, you may catch what's going on. So look at verse 1 through 8. We we'll, we'll already have the introduction, Simon Peter, a servant, and so forth, verse 1. And then, he, and then he's asking for grace and peace be multiplied and there. And then in uh, verse uh, 3, we'll pick up. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain. Now, I mentioned that, I think, last night uh, when I was preaching. <clears throat> all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now, watch this, verse uh, 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. These are not just small things. No, these are exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Then he says, and beside this, okay, so look at what he's, he's building up to a point. And beside this, giving all diligence, add. Now, now my subject tonight is basically, and you will get it in a minute, is keep adding. Keep adding, and don't subtract. Keep adding. You'll get that point in just a minute. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue. Now, it's understood he's saying add virtue, okay? And to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Eight, for if these things be, these things if these things be in you and, what's that word? Abound. What do they do? They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Watch, if you will. I think I can say safely that um, this is relevant for us now. I, 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 I get, I, I get the seven churches. I get that. I understand that. I, I, and and I, you know, I've been through Bible school and I've been all that, pastor and all that. And I do believe that each of those um, church ages do work toward us. I do believe that we're 
um, on the outskirts of Laodicea. Getting there, close. We're really close getting there. But anyway, <clears throat> um, what, no one that I, that I can think of, and it wouldn't change my mind anyway, but no one, I think, would dispute that in their time, their Sardis and, and Philadelphia here, and we're, we're, you know, we're probably in there, um, are, they got some great things about them. But um, in, in my lifetime, and even back into the 70s, there's been, from the 1900s on, there's been such a horrible decline in the spiritual heart of the, of, of the, of the church. There's always been a remnant, okay? There's always been a remnant. There's always been, don't believe what the Catholic Church tells you, okay? Are y'all with me? There's always been a remnant of people. And by the way, I don't owe them one thing from my King James Bible. Amen. But they claim that. But anyway, I, this is God gave me this, and he, he, he superintended this Bible, this translation, and I have every word. I could go off on something right there. Because in Deuteronomy 8, 3, well, there's a, there is a translation from Deuteronomy 8, 3 to, to Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. And Jesus supplies the right word that is not, not in, the, in, the King, in the Hebrew. All, all right? So that's just for y'all. Your pastor already dealt with that. So, so there's nothing wrong with God translating or putting into the brain of his people to preserve the word of God. So when I hold my Bible, I believe every word of it. I don't question one word of it. I don't correct it, it corrects me. I don't ever say this would be better translated so-and-so. On the other hand, I will study my Bible and say that word translated there, right there, is translated here this way, and God superintended those translators there and there to get it exactly right. So that's just, let's get that out of the way, okay? All right. So I'm King James all the way. But anyway, so um, Sardis still had a few names. Did you get that in there when we read it? Had a few names. They, they were not defiled. Their garments were not defiled. They were, they, were, they were right, they were clean, they were not defiled. But anyway, anyway, there's not a, a definite line where the break is between, between these church ages, all right? There's not a, I, I've seen before from this date to that date is this one and this date to that date is this one. That's a man's idea about that, but there's nothing. But here's where I'm going. This is where, what I want to get at here tonight. The, there is a, there is a, a problem with Good church is stagnating, okay? If you leave water alone, it can start off good. But if it's there and there's nothing running and there's no, no influence on it, it can stagnate. Next thing you know, it's breeding stuff. I heard before a long time ago that the state bird up here was the uh, mosquito. I, I don't know, but, but, but let's get off that. But there's this peril of stagnation. Maybe you're thinking, we're not stagnant. We're not. I don't think a church this size could. I'd, I'd be surprised if there's not somebody. I, I don't want to make you mad. But I'd be surprised if there's not somebody that you've grown stable, stagnant. You've reached a place that you're happy with. And you're okay with. And that place right there is a very dangerous place. And I'll show you why in just a minute. But anyway, so um, the, the peril of, of, of a stagnant spiritual life, um, that's the, the danger is, is while this world grows deeper and darker and further from God, if we maintain, we're losing ground. I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about this in just a little bit. And I, I know that, that you already know this is true. But anyway, and I, I printed all this out and I printed a little bit smaller than I wanted to. But anyway, but anyway, um, well, here's what happens. <clears throat> Whenever I stay the same and the world changes worse 
And let's say I, I have become stagnant. I'm at a place where I'm happy. Everything's okay. I'm at peace. I don't have a problem. I don't feel a, a sense to, you know, to um, focus more. Here's the problem. Then I become weaker and weaker and weaker as it pertains to the world that is becoming more wicked and more wicked and more wicked. Are y'all with me? In other words, we can't stay we, where we are when the world keeps getting worse, 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 or before long. We'll be just as weak as the next church. So here's what happens. This is Bible. There has to be an increase in our spiritual walk, in our, in our spiritual standing with God, in, in our, just like the uh, second Peter was talking about, add, 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 add. We can never, ever stop where we are. Say, preacher, preacher, you, you cannot get to the place where you are too spiritual. Nobody here has to worry about that. It's not a problem. You, Paul said, I reach forth. He said, I'm not, appreh I'm not apprehended. But he said, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but I press. It's, he said, this one thing I do. That's what he said. Now, listen, if you will. Wow, we could go. I won't think I'm going to do it. Um, we could go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and read 1 through 14. But we, let's just get verse 13. Here's what that, Bible, that verse says. It says, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived, that's what it says. Evil men and seducers shall wax. The word wax means become. Let me ask you a question. Do you know that that little chapter starts off with perilous times shall come? Did you know we're already in them? <laughs> if we're not in them, woo, it's going to get bad, right? Evil men and seducers shall wax worse. Now, I, I mean, I know this is what it says. Wax worse and worse. That's a multiplication of worse. It gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. Who would ever thought that we're facing what we're facing in our land? Who would ever thought they'd even be voting in Congress and, and, state, and in state governments on transgenderism? Oh, the, the abortion thing was years ago. We're getting worse than that. Well, I can't say worse than that because I think that's about as bad as you can get is the murder of babies. But, but anyway, but, but anyway we've got to keep it growing. And we've got to keep strengthening in order to meet the spiritual challenges of our day. Let me ask you this. Are you prepared? Are you prepared to take your Bible, your King James Bible, are you prepared right now if, uh, what I'm about to say is heavy. Are you prepared to take your Bible and to, in a loving way, confront a a, let's say a, a teenager that's been sold on the idea of transgender or, or, or bisexuality or transgenderism. Are you prepared to take your Bible right now, open your Bible? Well, can I tell you this? You're going to have to. I don't want to do it. I don't even want to have anything to do with them. Bless your heart. They're, they're just as lost as I was. They need somebody to show them what the Bible says. We cannot be stagnant and deal with these issues that are coming down that are new to us. This is not all my subject, but I'm just telling you. We have to keep growing and, and becoming stronger and stronger in order to meet the spiritual challenges of our time. Your children are going to face this. If Jesus doesn't come, rapture us out. You've got children that are going to face people trying to influence them on issues, and you can't throw up your hands then and say, I wish I'd have been prepared. I am not saying, I've never, ever, one time, ever believed that a person needs to study the darkness to know the light. But we do need to know our Bible. We need to know it, and we're going, we really need to know it big time. Anyway, just maintaining a spiritual level is not going to do it. Won't do it. Do you have a prayer time in the morning? Don't answer my question. 
Or sometime in the day, maybe you're on, on a shift work or something. Do you have good quality prayer time? Don't answer my question. Then you're already a deficit. If it's no, I don't. I don't have time. You gonna have time to have problems? Yeah, right. Let's move on. Listen to this. I love it. In the 70s and 80s, in the 70s and 80s, you could be a member of most any independent Baptist church and survive. It wouldn't hurt you. I'll say on the average. I am not promoting just going to any. But I'll tell you one thing right now. You better check them out, and you better check them out two and three times before you go in and join. Well, I just felt good in there. Come on, people. Oh, you didn't say, you weren't saying it. I was putting words in your mouth. <laughs> you can't do that. But back in the 70s and back in there, let me tell you something. Almost any independent Baptist church was King James only. They had standards. I'm talking about they had good preaching. I'm, I'm just telling you. Now, I'm, I'm not saying overall it's not that way now. Not at all. No. Anyway, I want to give you some thoughts uh, on the critical issues that need to be strengthened in these last days. And this is not all of them. Lest we become just like what I think the Laodicean church will be. A church like some that are out now. And God's not in a hundred miles of it. Second Peter chapter 3, you might want to look there. 2 Peter chapter 3, and we're looking at 11 through 18. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What? This is big. It's in your Bible. We missed a little word, y'all. That's our problem. We look at those big words. Let's, study, let's do a word study on the big words. You better watch those little words. What manner of persons ought you to be? In all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming, unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. That does not mean stagnate, become stagnant, lay down. I've done my part. I've done this in the church, and I've done that in the church, and let somebody else do this in the church. And No, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved uh, brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, means to wrestle with, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest ye also being led away with the air of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. Now, steadfastness, it just simply means fast and stead, steady. That's what it means. Simple. But look at verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. The local church will never be stronger than the people that are in the pew. Yeah, and here's why I say this is because so many people think, and preacher, I'm just telling, I'm telling your people what, I, I'm, I've been where you are. Somehow or another, people think that the spirituality of the church lays on the pastor and his family. As long as he's strong, as long as he's straight, everything's fine. Everything's hunky-dory. That is not a fact. There are good preachers preaching the word of God. They're preaching their heart out. They're praying. They're loving God. They're trying their best. And, they're, and their church is dying on them while they're preaching straight good doctrine from the pulpit. And their people are dying. And it's not because he's not preaching. It's not because he's not saying it right. It's not because he doesn't have the right stand. It's because they've just had it so good. 
What's the problem? Pastor's preaching. People are coming. Folks are here. Folks are giving. The church is stable. What's the problem? The problem is you can't maintain. Because if you're in maintain mode, there's an exponential um, weakness going forward. In other words, you can't just stay where you are. It won't work that way. You cannot, you cannot stay that way. It will not work. Anyway, but anyway, listen to this. Your physical body will never be stronger and more healthier than what you put in it. Why in the world do you think it's different? I'm just saying putting words in your mouth, thoughts in your mind. Why do you think it's different that we, you remember Paul said some stuff about this body. What's the difference, let's say, you know, taking some truth from that, that thought and some truth from this thought, why is it different that a, a, good, uh, a good healthy regimen or, or, or taking care of your body, why is it different than a good church taking care of the body? Hey, listen, if I, fill my, if I fill this body up with bad stuff, I'm not preaching on eating. I left that to Brother Roloff. Bless his heart. I love that man. We named our first church after Brother Roloff's church, People's Baptist, and my own church, I surrender preaching in People's Baptist Church. Brother Roloff, um, Brother, I think it was Brother Curtis Hudson asked him to come uh, preach. He came and preached, and all he preached on was eating, what you eat, and healthy, and all that. <laughs> anyway, I'll never do that. But all I'm trying to do is make a comparison here. I, I, if I put the bad stuff in here, you know, don't come to me and ask me what the bad stuff is. I will not say a word, but I will tell you this. I will tell you this. It's the same exact thing. If you don't, if, if you don't take care of your body, Here's what, preacher, I just let my hair down now. Is that okay? For the first 60 years of my life, I told my body what it was going to do. For the last 20, it's told me what it's going to do. That's, a, that's right. Now, I'm in, you know, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying the, the Lord's been good, but I will tell you, there's things I can't do now that I could do then. I tried to cut that finger off a while back. That didn't work. Then I knocked the top off of that one two or three times. I'm restoring the 1975 um, Airstream, okay? Let's say I'm in process. <laughs> if I can keep all my fingers and toes and my eyes, maybe I might finish it you know, before Jesus comes. Who knows? But anyway, back to the subject. This is the body of Christ. And the body of Christ needs what it needs to be strong and, and to grow. You know, not just maintain. Great day in the morning. You can't just maintain. Your physical body will never be stronger than what you put in it or expose it to. And your church body, your body here will never be stronger than what is put in it and what it's exposed to. You've got to stay strong. You have to be hungry for it. Sometimes my body tells me it wants stuff that I don't want to give it. Are y'all with me? And sometimes the Lord may put something in his mind you may not want it, but the body will need it. Take it. Take it. Digest it. Assim What's that word? Assimilate? I don't know. I, I did go through high school, but anyway. Anyway. Oh, sometimes... The issue doesn't become critical until it's critical. Isn't that amazing? And I had these words, and it is now critical. Maybe you're thinking, we're up in Alaska. We don't know what's going on down there. Y'all ever heard of a place, a state called California? Did you know about, about everything bad? Start, hello, if you're from California, I love you. That's what we say to people sometimes when it's actually, brother, we, well, anyway, let's move on. So uh, this stuff migrates. Oh, so we say, well, we're from Florida. California don't bother us. Those crazy people are moving to Florida. But anyway, no, they're smart. But anyway, 
It'll get here sooner or later. If you're thinking, we're in paradise, everything's okay, we're not infected by that stuff that's down there in the Lord for you, no, it'll get here. Yeah, Satan will make sure that he gets some of them in here. Yeah, and I'll tell you what your preacher will do too. Under the Holy Ghost, under the leadership of God, he'll preach some of them out. And you'll say, what happened to so-and-so? I'll tell you what happened to so-and-so. God rung their bell and saved you from pain and misery Amen. and trouble. Amen. It's not God's will for everybody in here to be, in, in, in this town here to be in this church. But it is, it is God's will for us, you, to reach people. And if God wants them, and by the way, I've told people before, listen, if, if you go to the, no, I'm not going to tell that. You lead somebody to Christ, they need to, obviously God led you to lead them to Christ, they need to be here in this church. Hey, lady, if you go to the hospital and have a baby, somebody else don't need to come and take your baby and raise it. Did everybody get that? So if you see somebody get saved, encourage them to get here. Obviously God used you and this ministry to get them to Christ, so obviously God would have this ministry to grow them in Christ. Let's move on, okay? Oh. It's easier to stay strong and healthy than to recover after you have become sick. How does that relate to what I'm saying? Churches can become sick. They can. They can have, you know, the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. I quoted that the other night. Churches, churches can get sick, spiritually sick. People can get attitudes. That does not fit in a Holy Spirit filled context. Attitudes don't fit there. Well, I just don't like the way he looked at me. Really? I've made the mistake before and thought somebody was giving me the, the evil eye, come find out they had a bad headache. You don't ever know, but you better watch your attitude. Sometimes the issue doesn't become critical until it is critical. You can't wait on that. Anyway, I tell you from experience, the small matters matter. The thing you overlook will be the one that will cost you every time. Yeah, cost you. It's kind of like, let's say, uh, Parenting. The little thing you overlook in your child and the Spirit of God says, mm hmm, you better not overlook it. You better find ways and times to give instruction while there's receptors. You don't want to wait until they have, it's become a, a, life, a lifetime habit. I, I could preach on and on and on. I'm not going to do that. Okay. So it's easier to stay strong and healthy uh, than to recover after you've been sick. And I do tell you from experience, I've watched it. Small matters do matter because they become big matters. So if the Spirit of God, under pastor, Sunday school teachers, if the Spirit of God puts a thought in your heart that there's some something that needs to be dealt with. And I'll get to this in a minute. You don't wait. You don't say, I'll take care of that. No. Let me ask you this. If you were cut and you were bleeding out, would you say, I'll take care of that in a little bit? Sure you will. Dead as a doornail. When God shows us something, that's when we do it. People tell me sometimes, I pray and ask God every night when they go to bed to forgive my sins. Are you crazy? If the Spirit of God convicts us, then the moment is then, now, right now. So let me just go on and give you this. I want to give you some, some critical issues that have to be strengthened. Number one, the first critical issue that we must strengthen is our devotion to Christ. Now, then the question comes, well, what is devotion to Christ? It's kind of like, kind of like the Pharisees. Well, who is my neighbor? What is devotion to Christ? It's not one issue. 
I just read some of them to you. Devotion to Christ covers a, a lot of territory. It, it actually uh, involves every avenue of life. Look, if you will, at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And in Colossians chapter 3, well, let's just read 1 through 5, then we'll jump over to 12 through 17. 1 through 5. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Now, seek. Um, that means look for, right? Be in pursuit. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. This next verse, set your affection. That means I'm, I'm, just, I'm not doing I, I don't want to insult your intelligence, but it simply means to set your affection on Christ. Let me get back up here. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. What things are, what things are above? <laughs> Street of gold? No. Set your affection on things above. Look at three. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. I'm dead? What does it mean? I'm dead to this world. I'm alive to God. Look at verse 4. When Christ, who is our life. Oh, my goodness. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that next word on verse 5. Mortify. That has a kindred sound. My uncle thought I was on the farm. I was raised on a farm, big farm in South Georgia. He wanted me to be a mortician. Last thing on my, on my list was, I want to be a mortician. No, I, I don't want nothing to do with dead people, especially to me. But anyway, verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, by the way, that's not talking about church members. It's talking about your body members, your eyes, your, your ears, and so forth. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, uh, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And, of course, six, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. But look over there, if you will, still, at verse 12 through 17. Verse 12, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, it's talking about the heart, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, oh, forbearing one another. That means put up with them. <laughs> it actually means to put up with them a long time. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Oh, yeah, you'll either be right with God or wrong. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, what? So also do ye. I was going down to 17. And above all these things, put on charity, which is a bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God, let the peace. It doesn't say make it. It says let it. Let the peace of God rule. That means that the peace of God be king in your hearts to the which also you're called in one body and be ye thankful. And I love this right here. We'll read 16, 17. Let, there's that word again, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Dwell. Now, I've been dwelling in my house at 1808 Rattan Palm Drive now since 1986. That means I reside there. Okay, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, not just dwell, richly in all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 17, and whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. In a nutshell, basically devotion to Christ is this. And that's giving him all of everything. Listen, I think I quoted the Galatians uh, 2.20 in a 
message here. I'm crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Devotion to Christ is just giving him all, everything. Give him everything. And it affects every area of our lives. If I do that, you do that. We follow these scriptures, Colossians chapter 3, Second uh, Timothy, I mean, uh, second, and Second Timothy, but second, uh, second Peter 3, Romans. By the way, if you can live in Romans chapter 12, about the last half of it, you can live through anything as far as on this earth is concerned. If you can live through Romans chapter 12, about the last 10 verses or so, it takes care of a lot of stuff. If you ever have a problem with somebody and you want to deal with it, read there. You know what God will do? He'll say, shut up. I will deal with this. Anyway, strengthen your, strengthen your walk with the Lord. Do you know that um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, we quote it a lot, we preach it a lot, and it's true. Everything we say about it is true if, if we're right with it. But it says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as a matter of some is, but so much the more. Did you get those words? But so much the more. It means go beyond. Go beyond. Whatever, whatever you're doing in this matter, in that text right there, talking about being faithful to church and all that, so much the more. Don't just give the little and just don't give, the, just don't give what will satisfy your own mind. No, just go on. So much the more. I could, I could preach a message right here. Whatever you do, do so much do so much more. Love your wife so much the more. Love your husband so much more. Instruct your children so much the more, right? Love your pastor, pray for your pastor, pray for your church so much the more. Let's get off of that. Second thing is, is the critical issue of unanswered prayer. Wow. So preacher, we get prayers answered all the time. This is, of course, what I do believe. And that is... Wow. Whew. God's people ought to be able to pray and get prayers answered. What's wrong with that? He promised it. Now, I know verses. I know, I know verses that say when he won't, won't answer prayer. But what I'm talking about is, is being in a position and a condition where we can have assurance that when we pray, God hears and he answers. So is that in the Bible? You better believe it's in the Bible. I'm going to show it to you in the Bible, by the way. But watch, let me say some more, and then I'll get there. Anyway, I believe, now when I say here, the church, I'm talking about the church on earth, not this church, okay? The church of our day has been, I'm, I, I got it right the way I want to say it, so mechanical, calculated, programmed, and self-sufficient that the average church doesn't even need to have a prayer answered. Did y'all get that? Yeah, because, because it's not oiled by the Holy Spirit of God. It is all by the people back in their little conference room trying to figure out in their huddle, how can we get more people in here? Well, if we told them to come in the shorts, that would be fine. We'd have more people. Flip-flops are okay. Right? Hey, when a church becomes man-centered, it's D-E-A-D dead. And when a church stays God-centered, it's alive, 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 alive. I'm trying to tell you, exhorting, this church will stay alive and vibrant and thrive when Christ is at the center. Prayers are answered. Oh, great goodness. Wow. Anyway, listen on. It can survive on programs without the blessing of God. And the church that grows best and strongest grows by God's power given to the ministry because the people are walking with God. They're trying to be filled with the Spirit and they have prayer power and they see things done. And I remember where they said about Jesus. Never seen things like this before. Never seen it like this. Anyway. The church that grows best and strongest and stays that way the longest grows by God's power. And it's usually a, 
a result of effectual, fervent prayer by God's people realizing there's an enemy out there, but we don't want him in here. Let me tell you something. If everybody in this, in this church and in our church became prayer warriors with a clean heart and walking with God, walking in the spirit, there is no telling what would happen. Listen, let's just go to one text. Go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. I'm letting my hair down a little bit because this is my last service, and if I, if I stretch it out, I'll get over it pretty soon. Okay? 1 John chapter 5, and you want to look at verse 13 down through 15. First John chapter 5. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the, uh, what's that big word right there? Confidence. That we have where? In him. Look at that word that. If we ask anything according to his will, he does what? He hears us. So, well, I don't know how he hears us, okay? Look at the next verse. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. I have prayed prayers before, preacher. And I just, I blurted it out. It shocked me. Totally shocked that I prayed that prayer. Now, I, let me tell you, Romans chapter 8 tells me that the Spirit of God helps our infirmities. We don't know how to pray or what to pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit to help us our infirmities. Okay. I had prayed things before, and I thought, but the moment I did, I knew it came from God, and I knew he was going to answer it exactly the way that I prayed it. Did, I, did that happen? Yes. You can know that God hears you. Is that what I read? You can know that God hears you. You can also know when God doesn't. I can, I can take it. I'm not going to do it. But I could take it to some verses where God promises that the heaven will become brass. What that simply means is you can say your words and pray your prayers, but they'll come back. They never get there. You know what we want? And we better guard to make sure that we're walking with God and that we know we have confidence when we're praying. We're praying in the will of God and we're, we don't have anything, anything in our lives that's going to block. Listen, here's Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. The Lord's arm is not shortened that he cannot save, neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your sins have separated between you and your God that he will not hear. That's a promise right there that God said your sin will stop, your sin, my sin, will stop your prayer from getting to God. So what we want to make sure is this. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, not of this world's elusive dream. Wow, I don't see no more. <laughs> the critical issue of prayer. I could take you, by the way, over to Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 12. Here's Peter. He gets locked up, right? Maybe I can condense this. Peter gets locked up, and he's kept. They got him safe. Oh, oh yeah, they got him safe. And the people over there praying. The whole church is met together, and they're praying, praying, praying for Peter. Right? The angel comes. He's released. He thinks he's in a dream. He comes to himself. He goes knocking on the door. And what was her name that came? Rhoda? Anyway. Oh, she doesn't even open the door. She runs. Peter's here. Nah, you're mad. And the word, the word mad in that text means crazy. Not, not furious, mad. You know why he was released? Well, yeah, because God wanted to release him. But what God wanted us to get from the text is those people were praying. They weren't even believing good, but they were praying. Are y'all with me? Whew. Could I just say this? There's probably some people in here and you're thinking, man, my prayer life's been stagnant. I've just been praying over my oatmeal and cornbread and that's good but I'll tell you what there's more things to pray about 
What about when the preacher's preaching and, and you know somebody has been invited and they've come and they're unsaved? By the way, don't be one of those what will, Brother Roloff called them those what will, what will be, will be boys. Talking about the Calvinist. Paul wasn't a Calvinist neither. Prayer powers what the church needs to strengthen. Don't, I'm just saying, don't become lax and lazy and just think everything's running smooth. No, be serious about this matter. Number one, devotion to Christ. Number two, powerful prayer. Number three, the third critical issue is listening to the Spirit of God. Preacher, I believe this. I believe this is one one of the great failures and seems to be a mysterious thing to a lot of fundamental independent Baptists because they're so afraid of being called charismatic. We believed the Bible before there was a charismatic running around talking and think they're talking in tongues or rolling over barking like a dog, which they went through all that mess. All that, new, all that stuff, we knew it would pass away anyway. It wasn't biblical, it wasn't scriptural. But I'll tell you what is scriptural is the Holy Spirit of God resides in the true believer. He's in here. Do you think that he could abide in you and not talk to you for months and months? Sammy Allen said, Sammy Allen, remember Brother Sammy? Love that man. He's with the Lord. He said, I can't, I can't do it. I normally can do it just like him. I better not do it. He said, you suppose somebody could come and live in your house for two months and you not know it? That's about what he said. Did you know the Bible also confirms that we can know that the Spirit of God dwells in us, we that are saved? Right. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is, is we better be keen to hear. Be ready to hear. So I'm afraid you put something crazy in my mind, like, you know, I'm calling you to preach. <laughs> By the way, you'll know it. I've heard people say crazy stuff about the call. By the way, I... I, I, I kind of stayed away from that subject because I, I didn't want anybody to be a preacher called preacher. But I sure do want them to be God called. If that's, their, if, if that's what God has for them, I want God to call them, right? I dealt with it for a solid year in business. And it wasn't because I didn't want to give up the business. I'd never been down that road before. But I can tell you one thing right now. God kept dealing with me, and he gave me scriptures. He'll always use scriptures, by the way, and he used scriptures on me. And it took me a year. It didn't take him a year, but it took me a year. I do believe this. I believe God has a perfect plan for everybody in here, including any lost person. I know the plan for them is to be saved. But I believe God has a perfect plan for the steps of your life wherever he will have you to go. And if, we'll, if we will ourselves try to be in tune with God and I'm talking about and try to have that spirit-filled life, you will be able to know how God is leading you. Pastor talked today about how the Lord led him in your instant. I, I have the same story myself. I, I personally have that story. God, he has saved my hide before just by listening to that still, small voice. Did you know the most important person in this building right now is the Holy Ghost of God? And by the way, there are angels in here. No. In here, you better believe they're in here. They're ministering spirits that are sent to minister to us. There is a spiritual world here, y'all, but there's a Holy Ghost of God. And we need to learn to listen. I'm not talking about spooky stuff. I'm talking about when, when, you're, when, when you're taking the Word of God in and, and you're, you know, you're, you're listening and you're reading and God's building precept upon precept and precept upon precept in your life and your mind and He will put together the pieces of the puzzle and you'll see it. And you'll have peace and confidence in your heart that the Spirit of God has led you into something. Now, don't come to the preacher and, and tell him, God has led me uh, to go sell cars. I know he's calling me to preach, but he's leading me to go sell. I, 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 you know what? I don't, I don't buy none of that. Okay, y'all with me? 
Oh, I, by the way, I'm okay with my vocational. I'm all right with that if God leads somebody that way. And, and that's fine. That's, not, that, that's between them and God. But I, I'm just talking about this matter of listening to God and letting the Spirit of God lead you in your life. Romans, Romans chapter 6. <coughs> Let's get there. Romans chapter 6. By the way, also, as I mentioned a, a few minutes ago about uh, this matter of uh, Romans 12, if you'll digest Romans chapter 5, 6, 7, 8, it'll solve a whole lot of your, your um, misunderstanding of scriptures. Romans chapter 6, verse 13 and 14. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. And you know what? I don't think I got, I, I didn't write my uh, text down. It might be seven. But anyway, it's talking about the Spirit of God and, and listening to the Spirit of God when I transferred that over. You can look it up later. 2 Corinthians 3.18, the same thing. Until we have learned to listen to and listen for the still small voice of God, we will not become what God wants us to become. The reason that I was uh, uh, in my start uh, becoming saved in business Selling, surrendering to preach, selling out, moving to Chattanooga, going through Bible school, from there going to Columbus, Georgia, starting a church, from there, four years later, going to Niceville, pastoring there 31 years, resigning um, uh, after 31 years is because of that very thing. I had to know that God was leading me. You say, well, you're a preacher. Listen, I'm Christian. I'm Christian. Yes, I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm a Christian. I, I, I have to listen for the Spirit of God to talk to me too, not in an audible voice. Nobody go out of here and say, he believes that the Spirit of God talks to you in audible, audible. I don't believe that. I believe that the Spirit of God speaks to our spirit. And that journey right there that I just mentioned to you, from one place to another, one thing to another, to right where I am right now. By the way, if I'm not here because God led him, I'm just telling you, in his heart of heart, your pastor, he called me and asked me. I trust that he had God to speak to his heart, not in audible words, but in impressions in, in his heart to call me. Here I am. Are y'all with me? You have to guard this matter of listening for God to talk to you personally. Maybe you're thinking, and especially young people. It's just God can't handle all that. Oh, yeah. Did you know that? Oh, this got me the other night. I pray a lot during the middle of the night, okay? I'm an old person. I wake up in the middle of the night, and I pray through my whole prayer list in the middle of the night and then beg God to lay somebody else on me if I'm not sleepy yet. I just ask you, by the way, I believe in that. And he does. And then I get up. And then my wife and I pray together every day. Are you all with me? God will talk to you if you want him to. But the last thing you want to do is to ignore him. Anyway, let me move on. Listen for the still, small voice. And we'll never become what God wants us to become. Romans chapter 8, that's probably one I wanted a little bit ago. Verse 16 tells us, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The word beareth means to testify, collaborate, uh, or be evidence. So the, the Holy Spirit of God gives the evidence. There are churches right now that have Ichabod written over the top of their doorpost, and it says, Spirit hath departed. Here's my last thing. No, I got two, but I won't be long. The fourth and final, other than the one I added, uh, critical issue is the issue of unused talent. And... Um, this is um, something that you personally have to deal with in your own life. But a lot, of, a lot of good churches die because people lay down and say, well, some, I think I've already mentioned that earlier. Let somebody else do it. I've done my part. I kept the nursery. The church I started in Columbus, Georgia. There was a lady, good, good lady in the church. And we were small, you know, it was a new church. We were growing. 
And Charlie said something to her about keeping the nursery, and she she put Charlie in her place. She'd already done all her stuff. By the way, with that attitude, she didn't need to be in there. Amen? But the, by the way, the nursery is a ministry. We had people keeping babies while their parents were getting saved. But anyway, anyway, you can go sometime later to Matthew 25, get 14 through 30. But anyway, it deals with the matter of the talents. Talent, talent would be actually ability. Okay, it's not money, let's say. The talent was money. But what he does there is he's using the idea of the talent gave the ability to do something with it. So the teaching there, of course, would be you got something and God gave it to you. And that gift came from God. If you're saved, you can't say, I don't have a gift. Because you do. And if you want to use it, find it. He'll tell you what it is and he'll put you in that place. And here's the fifth one, and I'm going to quit. The fifth critical issue is a result of the four, first four, and that is people will be saved. Because if we can get to the place where Christ is first, he's master, you know, and we have prayer power, and we have, um, um, we're responding to the Holy Spirit of God, and we're applying ourselves. A natural thing to, to happen is going to be the result is spiritual things are going to happen. Some things are going to happen. By the way, it's such a blessing. I said the other day to see people baptized. That's not happening everywhere. But it does happen when God is the supreme, the master, the people are walking with him. They're praying in power. There's no telling what could be done. Listen to this. Souls will be saved. Lives will be changed. Homes will be safe, sweet, and God will be glorified. And if you're where you were and are not strengthening the things that remain, you will grow weaker and weaker. You will breed weakness in your life and in your church. Brother Rob, were you at faith when I needed the men to come to my house and pick up that 10 by 16 storage building and take it to the other end of my, my, my backyard? You just missed it. Okay, let me give you an illustration. I quit. <laughs> so... <coughs> So I have a 10 by 16 shed, heavy. And it's on one end of the house over by the driveway. And I, I needed to have it on the other end of the house over there. I wasn't strong enough to move it. And if I'd have called Brother Rob and said, Brother Rob, I need you to help me come over, come over here and help me move this building. Brother Rob and I, we could have, got on one end on the other end neither one of us would have budged it we wouldn't have moved that thing but I call I, I we was in, ch in church that night I think it was Wednesday night and I just said could some of the men come over and help me move this bill I had everything ready had everything out but I said could some of the men come over let me tell you what happened boom 20 25 men all right they come over there and we just spread out around that thing whoop Put it right where it went. You know what I'm trying to tell you? There's some things that one person can't do in here. But there's probably, there's probably not a limit to what can be done if everybody in here picked up your load and said, I'm just going to tune in, fine-tune my life, what you need to get rid of, God will tell you that. I, I'm not going to tell you. I don't even know. But God will tell you, if there's something hindering your, your growth in Christ, your stability, if there's something hindering, you know what you ought to do? You ought to get rid of it. You ought to win over it. There's things called besetting sins. You can find it in the book, book of Hebrews. 
Just don't let anything spoil you, stagnate you, make you at ease in Zion. Pursue. Reach for high ground. There's no telling what. If one person here that's not fired up got fired up, it rubs off. Strengthen the things that remain. Listen to this. That are ready to die. And they have died in some churches. They don't use the King James anymore. They don't go visiting anymore. Be surprised, preacher. I don't know what you know. But you'd be surprised down yonder how many churches have quit soul winning visitation. Strengthen the things that remain. I learned years ago that a that a chain that's got all of the links are 100 pound links, but there's a 20 pound link in the middle of it. That chain is still a 20 pound weight limitation. So, get all the links strong, it'll pull the load. Jesus will be magnified and glorified, and if you're here and you're lost, I preached at the church tonight, but the church loves lost people. Jesus loves lost people, and you must be born again. Lord, thank you for letting me preach with my